Okay, now we continue to talk about marriage. Uh, continue from yesterday. And then these are some ways to help us build up the marriage. So if you want to get married, if you want to build up the marriage, then you want to work on this. Now, many people have this concept. When I want to get married, I want to marry a beautiful, a uh, gentle, lovely woman, or I want to marry a handsome, rich, responsible guy. Basically, many people just think of what I can get. Yes. Because I want to say this, people are basically selfish. Say this please with me. People are basically selfish. Now this is not accusation, it's because all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. Now when people say, if someone says, I'm dating, usually they will say this. Oh, this guy is so wonderful. Oh, he has a lot of money. Or oh, he is so wonderful in certain ways. Or this girl is like this. It's usually saying about how good the qualities of this person. Usually they won't say, Oh, I want to really love this person. I want to really make this person happy. I want to satisfy his needs and make him happily married. People don't usually say that or think that. Even before people get married, this is what they think. Okay, I get married, I have a wife to take care of me. Now, I, I'll be honest. I have a woman that I can go to bed with, or I might have children, or I might have a man to take care of me, and this is what most people think about. It's what I can get. That is why most marriages fail. Because both want to get what they want and don't want to give. Don't think of giving. So when you want to build up the marriage, if you want to get married, think of how I can build up myself so I would bless the other person. How I can make the other person happy. How I can comfort the person and do things that build up the life of the person. Most people don't think like that. And now for many marriage, married couples, they say, well, he or she, my husband or wife, is always like this and all this problem, so I don't like him and then I get angry with him. That's what most people do. Because what they are doing is they are expecting the spouse to be, you know, to be perfect or to be, uh, achieving a certain level, that to be good in a certain level, and then when they're not good, then they, they will say, I'm, I'm angry, I yell at them. When I counsel couples, I notice very often, they sat there, and I was talking to both of them, trying to understand the situation, very often one person will look at the person with eyes like this, look here. It's despise, dislike. Seldom do they sit like this. Seldom. I haven't seen many couples like that. That they want to really show love. When you don't want to love, how do you expect the marriage to be good? Right? That's what Ephesians said that love your wife as Christ has loved the church. So if you want good marriage, and if you want to get married, learn to love. Learn to give. Learn to be nice to people. Some people say, if I love and give, then I'll lose. Then you should not get married. Because you're thinking of, in a marriage, it's like an exchange. I do something, I get something back. If I don't get it back, it's not worth it. Then you're not ready for marriage. Of course, in marriage, before marriage, people should know each other and talk about a lot of things. Talk about everything. Your spiritual life, your relationship with the family, the hurts you have in the past, what you want to do, uh, your view on money, your view on ministry, on serving God, everything. And, and your your parents, your house, everyone, the relatives, family members, how they are. We should all talk about this. 
so that we understand each other and then we can accept the other person and work with the person and live together with the person and make the person happy and, and uh, build up the person and satisfy the needs of the person. Then you are ready for marriage. Most couples before they get married are not ready for marriage. They don't know what is marriage about. They just think, I want to get a good woman. I want to get a good man. It's just, I want to get what I want. That is basically a selfish desire. It's not wrong to want to get it, but you want to give too. If you don't have a heart to give, that means you're not ready for marriage. Let me tell you about my wife. Someone asked me the question, how did I get a wife like that? I did not get that wife. I did not chase after her. It's God who put us together, but I still want to seek God for 11 months because I want to find out because I don't just want to marry someone because, well, she's good, look, good looking, she has a lot of good qualities. I don't just want to choose like that. I want God to choose for me. God has a plan already. So I pray to God and say, Lord, if it is your will, please accomplish it. If it is not your will, please stop it with your almighty power. And if I find that she's not the right person for me, I will stop it, no matter how many good qualities she has. Now, are you ready for that? Yes. Because it's most important that it's God's will, because God knows who is the right person for you. If you marry the wrong person, then your whole life could suffer. And also, even if you marry the right person, but you don't know how to love her or him, then you still ruin the marriage. And so I hope that you would really seek God's will. For 11 months, I pray and seek. And then got verification in different ways. And up to today, I still see verification that she's really the right woman for me because she has a lot of wisdom that she can really help my ministry and build up my ministry because her wisdom helps me and her love for me supports me and makes me really feel uh, you know, uh, comforted and strengthened in every single way. And I also build her up. We don't just, I don't just get from her. I, whatever I can do, I would do to her. Whatever I can make her happy, I would do it. And anything that makes her unhappy, I will stop doing it. If I know that it doesn't make her happy, I will stop doing it. But many couples are like this. They're always saying, he doesn't do this. And I don't like him. I yell at him. I'm angry with him. Many people never think twice before they do this. They just treat people badly and they don't think of the consequence. Because this is the person in your most important person in your life. Do you want that person to be hurt? No. But let me ask you, is it common that people hurt each other in marriage? Is it common? Yes. And they don't think about it. And they think it's just because he's bad, so I want to hurt him or her. But even if it's bad, then you want to find a way, find a way to solve the problem. And then we should find out before marriage. So my advice to anyone who wants to get married, pray for guidance from God. Do not go into romance. Now many people would have romance and very soon go to bed. That's the wrong way. That way you are guided by lust. And you fall into lust. You're going to destroy the marriage even if it's planned by God. So I hope that we all don't just say, wow, he's so good looking, he's so rich, or she's so beautiful, she's so gentle and lovely. Don't just look at those. It's most important you seek God's will. And then for pastors here, I suggest that you have dating counseling. When people are thinking about dating, that they will see the pastors or some leaders, and then you will counsel them, find out about them, whether they are suitable, and pray together. Pray together for God's guidance. Now some people say, I pray and I feel it's the right person because they already want this person. So they pray, they feel good. But sometimes it's their own desire. But you also want to relate, not in a private way, not in a, a private room, but 
in public places that you can relate and talk and find out if that person is the right person. And I want to say also in Africa, I hope that you will follow God's culture instead of African culture. African culture is that man and woman eat separately. Now I don't know about walking together. Now the Japanese men walk ahead and the Japanese women walk behind. Here, when the couples walk together, do you walk together or one walk in front? They behave like the Japanese as well. Say it again. They behave like the Japanese as well. Japanese. Yes. So the woman is walking behind yes. and the man is walking ahead. Yes. Yes. Is that true? No. no. Hold hands. Some people hold hands, okay? How about other people? Some people do. Okay. So I hope that you want to, in marriage, should there be intimacy? Should there be close relationship? There should be. If people are not ready for close relationship, you don't get married. But some people get married for sex. And then they are like, like the lions, you know, the lions. Have you watched movies about the lions? Yes. They have sex and then after they have sex, they forget about the female. They, <laughs> nothing. Just only when a lioness is on heat and then they have sex. And then after that, finish and then nothing. No relationship. It's just eating and fighting to get the food. <laughs> and I hope you're not like that. that. That the relationship, you want it to be loving because all people want to be loved because God has these qualities put into us. Now, yesterday I talked about the difference between male and female, and now I just briefly summarize, very briefly. Generally, men look for doing something, achievement, goals, and then women usually look for relationship, talking, sharing the feelings, getting support, getting support of feelings, and then for men, it's looking for doing things together. So for men, generally, we don't, men don't, don't usually like to chat too much, but some, people, some men do chat a lot. They don't want to chat about their feelings. Usually they talk about things and business instead of talking about feelings. And then for women, when they get married, that's the beginning of romance, they think of. Now we enter a romantic relationship. But for many men, I'm married, I come home every day, that's love. They think that I'm here, that's love. But actually for women, they want intimacy and talking and, and sharing. And also when there are problems, they want to handle it together. But many times, because women have a strong sense of responsibility. Write down, this down. Women have a strong sense of responsibility. In what sense? If the home has no food, the woman usually notices it before the men. The woman is more feel have have more responsibility, sense of responsi responsibility toward the children and for toward the husband. Generally, the woman has more sense of responsibility, and the men generally have less sense of responsibility, except for what they want to do. What they want to do, they have sense of responsibility. But in the home, and then toward the family member, generally the men would not remember many things he has to do. Very often men will forget what to do. Now, and then what happens? Now please, move a little bit, everyone. After lunch, some people fall asleep easily. Move around. Tap the person next to you. Now, because women have a sense of responsibility, so when a woman looks at the husband and there is something she doesn't like, or children, she would have more emotions than a man. For a man, he doesn't care that much. He doesn't remember that much. So, he doesn't remember what happened. He doesn't remember the problem. But for the woman, she wants to watch over everyone, the husband and the family, the children, they're all in good shape, in good condition and doing well. Is that true? Mostly women have more sense of responsibility. And what comes with their sense of responsibilities are emotions. Because if the husband doesn't come home to eat, if the husband do, doesn't do certain things, 
and the children don't obey, the woman get more ex uh, angry, frustrated. Usually the man, usually the man doesn't get as much frustrated. Usually. And then what happens is, now the man get frustrated when his sovereignty, being the, you know, the, being the, uh, the leader of the family, being uh, challenged, then he will get angry. If the wife say, you're not doing good, you're not uh, doing, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then the man get angry because his position is challenged. But women will get angry easily when the husband or the children are not doing what they're supposed to do. And that's why then men will turn away. So hopefully the women will realize that the destructiveness of emotion and be willing to talk about it in this way. Oh, I noticed that the children have this problem and we need to find a solution. What should we do? To talk about it like this, instead of saying, very often the wife would say, you didn't take care of the children and the children are going bad and, and, it's, and, it, and you put all the responsibility on me. What's happened is, there is a lot of accusation. Because she has a sense, strong sense of responsibility. And then she has strong accusation. And then the husband will get angry and turn away. That's how many marriages break down. Have you noticed? Because the woman has a strong sense of responsibility and the man is not doing it, so the woman gets angry. When the woman is angry, then the man is, doesn't listen to her and then walk away and then the relationship will get worse and worse. So usually it's woman who wants communication, caring, working together, but the men want to be quiet. Men usually like to be left alone and so they don't want to listen to you know, all this problem. So as women, it's wise to, you know, say, we have this problem, what should we do? And I care about you and you're doing well. Encouragement, uh, appreciation, and then the man will, will respond better. So we understand this from yesterday that generally, men like to be a fireman to, to help the wife instead of listening to the feelings. So as men, it's better that we listen to the feelings of the woman. Okay, now I talk about what husband and, do, and wives can do to build up the relationship. And this works even not only in marriage, works in other areas too. Okay, the first area, always think of satisfying and making the other person happy. Now many people never think of marriage as a way to be happy. They always think of marriage, I have children, I have sex, I have money, it's what I can get. But let me ask you, does the Bible tell us Christians to be joyful? Yes. Should we live joyfully? Yes. Should we enjoy the gifts of God? Yes. yes. So marriage and life, life should be joyful, happy. But usually, many husbands and wives don't think of making the other person happy. Just, I want something done. I want this thing done. So there's no idea of making the other person happy. When you, let me ask you, if for instance, you want to ask someone, a boss, to hire you, do you want to make that boss happy? Yes. Usually then you have a goal, you'll make the boss happy so that he will hire you, right? Yeah. If we have this marriage and we want the marriage to be good. Should we try to make the husband and wife happy? Yes. Yes. You know, this is what I do all the time. I call my wife just now and she's waiting for the next break time that I'll have a video call with her and she wants to see me before she goes to sleep. And I will try to do it. And when I do it, I will say nice things to her, love her, and encourage her and say, I'm coming tomorrow. About this time, I'm leaving. And she's happy, she's counting down. Tomorrow, you know, at night, I'll be flying away. And she's happy. So when I tell her that, she's happy. Instead of saying, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, those doesn't help, right? So I want to do things that make her happy. And she does things that make me happy. She, all kinds of things. She, 
She has done so many things. When I'm away, sometimes she'll buy something for me and then come back and show me. Okay, when you're away, then I will spend money to buy you something. And, and then sometimes, very often, she would give me gifts with a lot of time and preparation. One time, it was, um, I forgot whether it's Valentine's Day or is it uh, our anniversary, I forgot what it is, or my birthday. On the mirror we have in the restroom, she had many small hearts. And all the small hearts together make a big heart. And in each of the hearts there is a message there. So she happened to come across a shop that has many of these hearts sold that you can fold together and then she wrote each of them has a message and she wrote and then she put it on a mirror so when I woke up I saw this this is how she is and then I want to say wow this is great I love you I like you you're so good to me so I will always respond whenever she does anything and then now one time she told me okay I, I made this gift for you and and your response, I think it can be stronger. And then realize, I realized I, I should have responded stronger. So I, I said to her, I really like it, and I thank you for that, and it's really wonderful that you prepare that, and I thank you very much, and I appreciate, and I'm happy to have the wife, and then she say 100 points. And I said this yesterday. So uh, what I'm saying is, she's guiding me too. Instead of saying, I did this, I made this gift for you, and you did not respond much. Now I did say thank you, it's very nice, very nice. Yeah, I said that to her. But she wants me to say more than that. Why do you want your husband to say more to you? Yes. So if you want to make her happy, you do that. And then the wives, you want to make him happy, don't nag too much. But listen to him and, and uh, be nice to him, be kind to him. So the thing is, make what makes him or her happy. Now, let me say this very important. It's what makes him or her happy, not what makes you happy. I use an illustration. On the birthday of a wife, the husband bought an exercise machine because she said to the wife, you need exercise. You keep slim. And so on birthday, I bought you this exercise machine so you do exercise. Do you think the wife likes the gift? Yeah, no. You like it? No. Why? Why didn't you like it? Because the gift is saying, I want you to do exercise. I don't like your body. I want you to exercise. It's, it's what the husband likes, right? So what the husband likes, does it mean the wife will like? No. So remember this. When you give a gift, give a gift that the person likes. It's not what you like. And when you do something to make the other person happy, it's do what he or she likes, not what you like, okay? And then also, always be prepared ourselves so that we are happy, joyful, and relaxed when we relate to him or her, or anytime, anytime. But many people live like this. Many people, they wake up, oh, a lot to do. Oh, this problem. Oh, all day long is problems. Let me tell you, depressed people should not get married. Now, you might say, depressed people want to get married so they get happy. Let me tell you, getting married won't make you happy. Why? When they're depressed, it makes the other person unhappy. It won't make the marriage more happy. Actually, it's painful. So we first prepare ourselves, both persons prepare ourselves to be able to love each other and be joyful and happy and do good things to the person before they get married. Marriage is not a place for healing. You have healing first before you get married. Do you agree with that? Has anyone married someone unhappy? And you find it so hard to pull the person out, right? So we first prepare ourselves to be happy to be always, to learn to love. We need to learn to love. Not many people learn to love. Not many people learn to make people happy. 
Not many people learn to do good things to people. Let me ask you, do you do good things to people and make people happy? Many people don't, even in ministry. Now you might say, my ministry is to help people to be happy. But the way sometimes you preaches, you have to be happy. You relax in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. That's not making people happy. But instead, pastor can say something like this. You are important to me. You're important to me. I'm happy to see you changed. I'm happy to see you being so joyful. And I'm happy with you. That way, the pastor can make the people more happy, right? Instead of saying, you have to do this, do that, do this, do that. Instead, we say, God loves you, and I love you, I care about you, and I want to help you and build you up. So that way, we make people happier. Are you like this? Let me ask you, are people around you like this? Are people around you like this? Always happy and make people happy? Not really, right? So people are not ready to be married. When you get married, be prepared to make the other person happy and then you can have a happy marriage. If you're always sad, what, ask yourself why? Yesterday we talked about handle negative feelings. Why? Because the thinking, the thinking, the wrong thinking. What wrong thinking? Things should be perfect and then I'll be happy. Is this a correct thinking? No. No, things will never be perfect. Or if the problems are solved, then I'll be happy. Is this correct? No, because many things will not be solved. So we don't wait until the good condition to be happy. We rejoice even in difficulties because the Lord loves us. Therefore, I can rejoice anytime. When you are like that, always want to make people happy, then you are ready. I mean, that's one area that you're ready for marriage. Are you like this? Are you really like this? Do you make the people around you happy? Okay? If you really do that, then, then you, in, in this sense, then you're ready, okay? And also, have a healthy EQ. Have you heard of EQ? Yes. Emotional quotient. That means what? That you can manage your emotion if something goes wrong. For instance, you drop some money, or someone stole some money from you. It already happened. You can do nothing about it. You lost the money. But some people say, ah, I suddenly stole my money, oh, and get angry. And yell at people, it was your fault because you didn't come punctually. So I dropped my wallet and someone stole from me. It's because your fault. Have you met people like that? Something goes wrong and then they blame you for no reason. And so they don't have a healthy emotional quotient. They don't know how to have a healthy emotion, how to be joyful and peaceful. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, life is too difficult here, you don't know. We have very, we have very difficult life, it's, there is no way we can be joyful. But you know, even in persecution, many Christians have joy because they have the Lord. So we learn to say, thank you for the sun, hallelujah, thank you for the rain that gives rain to this country. And now the sun comes up. Yeah. Have you noticed every day we come to the meeting, there's no rain. And then when we leave, no rain. It's only in the middle, in the lunchtime, and then there's rain. <laughs> and then at night when we sleep, there's rain. So you thank God for that, hallelujah, praise the Lord. So for everything, we want to have a positive mentality positive feelings to manage our emotions that way you are ready you are more ready okay if a person is emotionally not stable not willing to bless other people make other people happy they should not get married because the marriage will become very painful many people's marriage are painful because in a marriage there's always complaint you're not doing it I'm angry with you, I'm frustrated. It's a lot of negative feelings. Now by yourself, we can manage our emotions better, but when two person, you're also affected by the other person, right? So if both person are depressed, it's very, very difficult. Just one depressed person, we can gradually help this person. But if he also has depressed wife, 
And then he goes home and then see the wife. The wife is emotional and angry. It's harder to help him. So I suggest that you all take care of yourselves first before you get married. And then if you notice that you're emotionally unhealthy, take care of that so that your marriage or relationship is built up. Okay? Number two, you know to have a good marriage, put, put down ourselves. Put down ourselves. Because most people just want a marriage to get something for themselves. Instead of, I want something for their person. Let me tell you, before I marry my wife, I pray to the Lord for 11 months to ask for God's direction. And after I decided to marry my wife, I said this, when I marry you, I'll smile at you every day. I will hug you and kiss you every day. I will make you happy every day. That's what I said to her. It's not what I want you to do. It's what I want to do to her. Can you do this to your husband or wife? I want to make you happy. Are you willing to go home and do that? But some people say, he or she has not been nice to me, so how can I be nice to him? But when you don't want to be nice, then the marriage won't change. But if you start to be nice, things can change. Let me tell you, I have done marriage counseling. There was one woman who was a minister. I went to do some training for ministers. She was a woman minister. And then she come to me for help for her relationship with her husband. And she said her husband always want her to give birth to a son. She has a few girls, daughters. But you know, in some countries, they always want a son. And, she, and the husband wants a son. And she doesn't want a son. I, I mean, she doesn't want to give birth anymore. And so what happened is every day, and I, I find out from her, every day she went to do ministry until 10 or 11 p.m. And then she went home and then she slept with the daughters and then the husband is in another room. And then she asked me, what can I do? My husband keep pushing me to help, to give birth to a son. What can I do? I told her, if you continue like this, what do you think your husband would think about the relationship? And she would start to realize. And I let her realize that she will lose her husband. Because her husband finds that the wife is given to the daughters. And her husband lives in another room, asleep in another room. She, he doesn't have the wife anymore. And he's unhappy. And I told her, very soon you can have a divorce. So she decided to change. And then call her husband and say sorry. And also say, I want to love you. And then later she told me, now our relationship is like lovers. So I thank God for that. So if you're willing to change, then your relationship can change. Now, let me tell you this honestly. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Um, when I look at you, I smile sometimes, but when I look at you, your expression might be what you show to your family member. You look at me, it's like this. Some of you. So I ask God to put more joy in you. That's what I noticed in Africa. I went to many places. And even when we pray, it's like this. Can we have more joy? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. So wonderful. Now, appreciation is very important. Now, I'm not saying I'm any special. I'm not special. It's just God who is special. But when I can come to you, it's a blessing. You know, it's not easy to come here. Anyone to come here is not easy. Because things are very expensive here. For me to come here to have this meeting, I have to bring a lot of money. For other people to come, they have to bring a lot of money too. And I thank God for the good teaching I have. Amen. And then you can have this for free. Mm. So shouldn't you say, thank God, hallelujah. I should appreciate that. Now I'm not asking you to appreciate me, yeah. but I'm asking you to appreciate so that you'll be happy. happy. I'm so happy because we have these meetings yeah. that we can learn so much, it can change our lives. Have you heard teachings like this, what I gave you? Not really. Not really, because I'm sad to say, I went to many countries in Africa, they said, 
you are the first pastor who came to train. Most of the pastors just came to have a revival meeting and pray for us and then left and didn't tell us what to do. But I came to train. Isn't that important? And they said, you're the first pastor who came to train. So soon to be happy for that? So can you smile a little bit? <laughs> Praise God. So put on yourself and appreciate what you have and then you'll be happier. You'll be happier and then you can make people around you happier. Whatever I can do to my wife and to other people too. If you're with me, you notice that I will talk to you, I will listen to you, I will see what I can help. You know, the other day we were sitting outside and here you talk about the situation in Liberia. And I heard Bishop talk to me, told me about the financial problem here. When I heard that, my heart is hurt. And I think, what can I do? Now, usually I tell people, I'm not a supporting organization yeah. because we are a small organization that is amazing that we can pay for the rent in Hong Kong and pay for a worker and also it pay for the, the uh, my ministry, mission work is amazing. We, we cannot support local ministries but if I see a special need I can raise it. I can raise with some people and we have raised money to help some ministries in some ways when there are some special needs. And I heard that here, because of lack of money, many people don't get married. I can tell the people in Hong Kong, and then some people will be willing to give to support here. Now, uh, Bishop told me that another way is to build a clinic here that can make money, and then the church has money and then can help people, and also give job to some people. And then when I heard that, what did I do? I would say, yes, I'll try. So my intention is to care and to love. It's not to get. Yes. It's not to get, it's to bless and to make you happier Christians. So I hope you'll be like that too. Put down yourself and think of blessing. Hallelujah. Okay, and then men, for marriage, what should you know? First, give your wife more time because she likes you to be with her. And, and for me and my wife, every day we have a time to talk. Every day. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. And she usually drives home. And when she drives home, it's 30 minutes to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. I'll be talking with her all the time on the phone. And then also when she's at home, if there's anything, we'll talk. And when we wash dishes, we talk. When we brush teeth, teeth together, we talk. When we're together, we always talk. So that's building up relationship, giving time. And then to Treasure her relationship. You want a good wife, happy wife? Treasure her relationship. On earth, other than God, put her in the first place. On earth, put her in the first place. Number two, share your feelings. Learn to share your feelings. Yesterday I talked about the feelings, remember? You wrote it down too, can you remember? Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts. These feelings. Positive or negative, share it with your wife or the friends around you. Then people can have connection with you. Now, when you hear my sermon, have you noticed I talk about my personal life sometimes? Oh. I talk about my daily life so that you know about me. You know what kind of person I am. And we should be like that to other people. So people know who we are so that it's easier to connect, right? So. We want to make it easy for a wife to connect. And also, don't repeat the same mistakes. Now that's what happened to many men. That we forget, and then we do the same mistake, commit the same mistake. Like one big mistake of many men is uh, late, get, being late, coming late for the wife. And my wife has reminded me, she said, come punctually is a way to respect the person. Come punctually is to respect the person. So. Next time, actually my wife is very good about that. She will count time. How much time? Do you know how much time does it take for you to come from your home to here? Did you count? My wife count. How much time to, do, to go somewhere, somewhere, to do something she knows at all, so she can figure out her time ahead of time. So that's one way to keep being punctual. So don't make the same mistake again. One is not being late and also how not to forget things 
I have different ways to help myself not to forget. Okay? And then don't be a male chauvinist. You know male chauvinist? I'm number one. I'm number one. You have to obey me. Now many people just look at this Bible verse. Women submit to your husband. They just look at this verse. And they didn't look at the other verse. Husband loves your wife as Christ loves the church. And also, actually in Ephesians it says, submit to each other. And then it says, wife submit to your husband. Now why does the Bible say to wife submit? Because women have a sense of responsibility. So they have a sense, they want to take over sometimes. So they want to take control. So in that sense, women be more gentle, let your husband make decisions. But husband too, listen to your wives too. Listen to her suggestion. Very often she has good suggestion. So because women have a tendency to overwhelm the husband. A counselor once told me, he said, many husband and wife come to him for counseling. And I noticed the same thing too, but he told me this fact. Very often the women start talking and then the men have nothing to talk. <laughs> because generally the women talk more. And so they dominate the relationship. And also, there is one example it's like this. The husband and wife come up to share in front of the group. And the woman share first. And then she share smoothly. And then came to the time for the husband. And the husband could not think of what to say or he was too slow to say. And then the wife did this. Share it. <laughs> and then what, what did the husband do? He was more scared. So wives might have a tendency, do it. When, what are you waiting for? <laughs> it doesn't help. So because of the sense of responsibility, you can pat on the shoulder. You can do it. You can do it. So always think of grace. Grace. To give encouragement, support. I appreciate you. That way, he can do better. So for wives, if you appreciate...